ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار All praise for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we thank Him, we glorify Him, and we seek His help and aid. And we ask Allah to forgive us our sins and to protect us from the evils of ourselves and from the sins that we commit. Whoever Allah guides, there is none who can misguide. And whoever He causes to go astray, there is none who can guide. I testify that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. Verily, the best of speech is the book of Allah. And the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of religious matters are those that are innovated. And every religious innovation is a bid'ah. And every bid'ah is a misguidance. And every misguidance will be in the fire of hell. My brothers and my sisters, we are in the month of Muharram, the sacred month of Muharram, one of the sacred months in Islam. And in it, the most significant event took place in this month on the 10th of Muharram. It is called Ashura. The significant day in that was a day that was commemorated by Quraysh itself. It was a day that was commemorated by Quraysh itself even before Islam, although they were not people from the book. So what is Ashura? Ashura is a day from the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا أَنْ أَخْرِجْ قَوْمَكَ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ That we have sent Moses with our signs to his people and commanded him saying, Take your people out of the darkness into light and remind them of the days of Allah. If we were to ask ourselves, what are the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In the tafsir, they say the days of Allah are the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The blessings of Allah that happen on special days, on specific days that the Israelites experience and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah saved them from their tortures and from their oppressions and release them from bondage and honor them that is a day of the day of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a great blessings upon a people that they should remember that day and whenever Allah punishes a people deservedly then we also have to remember that day so it is a day to remember and reflect upon the blessing and the ni'mah and the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Pharaoh and his people. And so Musa alayhi salam in the next ayah, he reminded his people of the favors and the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, فَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إذ أنجاكم من آل فرعون. He tells them to remember the favors of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala upon you, that He had saved you from the people of Pharaoh. And what did the people of Pharaoh used to do? 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Quran Yasumunakum su al-adhab Wa yudhabbihuna abna'akum Wa yastahyuna nisa'akum That they would send the worst punishment upon them And they would kill and slaughter the male children And they would save and leave the female children alive he says, Musa alayhi salam reminded them that that's the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so my brothers and my sisters, the day of Ashura is that day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved the children of Bani Israel from the torment and the tortures and the oppression of Pharaoh and his people. And when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Medina, he saw the Jewish population fasting on this day and he asked them that why are you fasting on this specific day? And they told him, Hatha Yomun Salih Najallahu fihi Bani Israel min aduwihim fasamahu Musa. That that is a righteous day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Musa and his people from the oppression of Pharaoh and as a result of that Musa salam fasted in thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is why we also fasted and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Nahnu wa haqqo bi Musa minkum that we are closer and we are deserved and more worthy of Musa to you Fasamahu wa amara bi siyami that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he fasted it and he commanded the people to fast on the day of Ashura. And so in the first year, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded them to fast, it was an obligation to fast until Ramadan came and then it became abrogated, meaning that it became a sunnah to fast, recommended, as Aisha narrated, radiallahu anha, that kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amara bi siyami yawmi ashura, falamma furida ramadan, kana man shaa'a saam, wa man shaa'a aftar, that Allah's messenger ordered the Muslims to fast on the day of ashura, which is the tenth of Muharram, which is tomorrow insha'Allah. That Allah ordered the Muslims to fast on the day of Ashura and when fasting in the, in the month of Ramadan became prescribed and compulsory, then it became recommended, it became optional, it became a sunnah to fast. And it is said in the hadith that there is no other day that the Prophet ﷺ would be more eager to fast and urging people to fast than the day of Ashura. And what is the benefits of fasting on this day? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, Siyamu yawmi Ashura, inni ahtasibu ala Allahi an yukaffira sanata allati qabla. That fasting the day of Ashura, I hope Allah will expiate for the year that came before it. And so fasting the day of Ashura, which is the tenth of Muharram, will give you a great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive your sins committed the previous year, the past year. And Imam al Nawawi rahimahullah, he said, explaining this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive you your minor sins. Just for one day of fasting, Allah will forgive you your minor sins. As for the major sins, it requires specific tawbah, specific repentance. And towards the end of the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the companions came to him and they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, Ya Rasulullah, innahu yawmun tu'adhimuhu al-yahudu wa nasara that, O oh, Messenger of Allah, this is the day that the Jews and the Christians, they commemorate this day 
and they take it as a special day and they fast in it also. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them, فَإِذَا كَانَ الْعَامُ الْمُقْبِلْ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ سُمْنَ الْيَوْمَ التَّاسِعِ That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them that when the next year comes, if Allah wills, that we will add to it the ninth day, the ninth day of, of Muharram. قَالَ فَلَمْ يَأْتِ الْعَامُ الْمُقْبِلْ حَتَّى تُوُفِّيَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ That the next, the next year came, and when it was time to fast it, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had already died. So we have to understand, my brothers and my sisters, that part of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to fast on the ninth and the tenth. In addition, so the ninth and the tenth to be different and distinct from the Jews and the Christians. And if you cannot fast on the ninth and the tenth, then the tenth and the eleventh. And what happened on the day of Ashura was significant. What has happened, we would like it to repeat and to continue to happen over and over with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming. But we need to understand the gravity of this. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeatedly talks about it with the conversation between Musa alayhi salam and Pharaoh, Fir'aun. The message of Musa alayhi salam represents and replicates the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the oppression of Pharaoh represents the height, the zulm, the height of oppression. And it was not enough that he called himself God and forced the people to worship him, but it represents the oppression and the evils that are that are going on and that are being perpetrated throughout the globe by those in authority. So we will look at a few verses in Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us what happened to Bani Israel and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them. Allah says in Surah Al-A'raf, وَقَالَ الْمَلَأُ مِنْ قَوْمِ فِرْعَوْنِ أَتَذَرُ مُوسَى وَقَوْمَهُ لِيُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَيَذَرَكَ وَآلِهَتَكَ That the chiefs, the leaders of Pharaoh, they, they said to him, they came and they encouraged him to do something more drastic, something more brutal to the children of Israel. And they asked him, are you going to leave Musa and his people to spread corruption in the land? and forsake you and stop worshipping your idols? Look at Musa salam, and it should remind you of the pattern. This is following the same path that exists even today. That when you're reading the Quran and when you watch the news, you also see similar patterns taking place. The same pattern. Are you going to leave Musa salam, and his people to spread corruption? How could someone look at Musa salam, and say that he was spreading corruption? How could someone look at honesty, kindness, truthfulness, calling to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say that's corruption? Profiling people, that's not corruption. But worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, that's corruption. Being, deceit in how, being decent in how you dress, how you look and how you uphold the truth, that's considered as corruption. So the chiefs were asking Musa salam, are you going to let them do this? And Pharaoh feeling the power and feeling the might, feeling that he could do whatever he wants, he responded. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, قَالَ سَنُقَتِّلُ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ وَنَسْتَحْيِي نِسَاءَهُمْ وَإِنَّا فَوْقَهُمْ قَاهِرُونَ That we will slaughter their children and we will save their women and we will have complete dominance over them. Meaning that we have complete power over them. We can do whatever we want to them. No one could stop us. 
If we put them in concentration camps, no one will, can stop us. This is what Pharaoh taught. And this is what the Pharaohs of today, they taught also, that they could do whatever they want and no one could stop them. And subhanAllah, in the face of such mighty aggression, Bani Israel, they could do nothing. They saw their children being slaughtered and, and killed and they could do nothing. They saw their women being taken away and they could do nothing, no power. And now the difference was that Musa salam, now he is with them and he is in their midst. So what is Musa salam, going to tell them? So in the face of this declaration, Musa salam, addressed them. He said, Qala Musa, لِقَوْمِهِ إِسْتَعِينُوا بِاللَّهِ وَاسْبِرُوا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that Musa told them, seek the assistance of Allah and have patience. And subhanallah, this advice is not coming from me and you. It's coming from a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who was inspired by Allah to tell them that seek the help of Allah and have patience, be patient. Because you don't have the power at this stage. You have no power to repel their evil. So what you do, you be patient and seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Musa also continues, إِنَّ الْأَرْضَ لِلَّهِ يُورِثُهَا مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ That indeed the earth belongs to Allah. He causes to inherit it whom he pleases. From his servants. So here Musa salam, is paving the path for them and he advised them to seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be patient and walk on the earth with taqwa. Because Egypt doesn't belong to the Pharaoh. None of the lands belong to any Pharaohs of the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the land belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah hu yurithuha man yasha. That Allah gives it to whomever He pleases. So Musa salam, was telling his people, if you want your situation to change, then right now you don't have the power to push back. That you don't have the power, but you still have power. You're mistaken if you think that you don't have power. That you have, in fact, you have the greatest power. You have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you. Just please Allah within your capacity. Please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within your ability. Fattakullaha mastata'atum. That fear Allah within your ability. That please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a way out for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises them. Allah has made a promise to you and a promise to them and a promise to everyone. Wal aqibatu lil muttaqin. That al aqibah, the best outcome, the best success, belongs only to the righteous, the muttaqun, the people of taqwa. And we understand, and we understand that under the pressure of Bani Israel, it was hard for them to be patient. But at the same time, the response, they respond to Musa salam. They said, Kalu uzina min qabl an ta'tiyana wa min ba'di ma ji'tana. That, O oh Musa, you have been, we have been experiencing this harm to us before you came and after you came. Meaning that they're fed up, that they are tired that they don't have any more patience. They lost their patience, they lost it. But they fail to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only allows injustice to continue whether it's at the hand of Pharaoh or, or anybody else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows injustice to continue up to a certain point. And that certain point is determined by two things. One, the height of injustice and two, those receiving the injustice and the oppression if they receive it with patience and 
acknowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control, then it will shorten the lifespan of every injustice. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiru. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een My brothers and my sisters, we may not be able to do much about the injustice being done to Muslims all over the globe To Muslims and to injustice being done to non-Muslims as well. We may not be able to change it, but at the same time, you're able to change it. And you can consider yourself part of the resistance to that injustice every time that you say yes to Allah and no to shaitan. That you're part of that resistance every time you fulfill your obligations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do whatever Allah commands you to do and stay away from the prohibitions of Allah. You're part of that resistance against injustice. When you decide that you'll fast the day of Ashura for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thanking him for us for the ni'mah and the favors upon Musa and his people and in following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then you're part of the resistance of pushing away injustice as well. And remember you're doing this so that that incident can keep repeating itself. And wherever there is injustice, Allah Azza wa Jal will take it away. And every time you recite the Quran and you obey Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and every time you follow a sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then you're part of that resistance against injustice. And every time you raise your hand and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your Muslim brothers and sisters, any part of the world suffering injustice, then you're part of that resistance against injustice also. So the day of Ashura is when you'll be fasting and remembering all the pharaohs around the world who spread shirk and oppression. You will remember all of this and you will remember Musa alayhi salam and his people of Bani Israel who had nothing with them. They had nothing. They were oppressed and they had nothing except Allah Azza wa Jal. And always remember the beautiful lesson of Ashura. And a beautiful lesson for us is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would always come to the aid of his people. And we take lessons from that individually. We take lessons from that collectively as a community. We take lessons from that as an ummah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would always come to the aid of his believers. If we turn back to Allah and have patience, that's the condition. That if you turn back to Allah and have patience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will relieve us from our struggles and our distress. And as a community and as an ummah, especially with the situation right now that we are in, with pandemic, we need to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seek his help and be patient and without losing hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whether individually we are struggling with something or from a community level, we are struggling, or from an ummah level, then we need to know that if we turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the same way Allah saved Bani Israel from oppression of Pharaoh, the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will relieve us from our struggles. So when we are going to commemorate the day of Ashura, and the day of Ashura is not about Hussein radiallahu anhu. Just I want to mention this quickly before we close. 
that we need to observe and commemorate the day of Ashura as the Prophet Wasallam did. That it is not about Hussein radiallahu an. Because there are some Muslims, may Allah guide them, who take the day as a mourning and take the day as a sadness and they try to mourn the death of Hussein radiallahu an, the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And of course, we affirm that the death of Hussein radiallahu an and the killing of Hussein was a great injustice. And he was a shaheed, he was a martyr. And he is from, he is from the one who is Sayyid Shabab Ahlul Jannah. He and his brother are the best of the youths in the, in the people in paradise. But it was not an Islamic practice. Has never been to commemorate the death of someone. It was not an Islamic practice to, to mourn the death of, of anyone or to renew sadness over and over every year. It's not an Islamic practice. That is not in the Quran. Look at the Quran. Let's look at the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that many prophets were killed. Some of the Allah did not even mention their names. But have you ever seen anywhere in the Quran Allah mourns the death of any of his prophets? Never. He doesn't even tell us their names. We know they were killed. We don't even know their names. So we understand that this is not the way of the Quran. Now let's look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He lost his wife, wives. He lost children, his sons, daughters. He lost his uncle. He lost some beloved companions who were dear to him. For a few months, he continued to make dua and ask Allah. And he was sad for a month for some of his companions. But did we ever see from the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he designated, he designated a day of mourning for, for any one of his household or his companions? Never. Did he ever designate a day that today is the day of the Shuhada of Badr? Or today is the day of the martyrs of Uhud? Never. So we see from the lives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he never ever, he never mourned the death of someone and renewed sadness over and over every year. And let us return to the, and if also we return to the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if we look from the time he became a prophet to 61 years after the Hijra when Hussein radiallahu an was killed, for 60 years they never celebrated, they never commemorate, or they never commemorate Ashura the way that some people are doing it. And that 60 years was the best 60 years of Islam. So my brothers and my sisters, let us return to the sunnah of fasting the day of Ashura as well as the ninth today as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would have done and if we can't fast today then we fast tomorrow and Sunday inshallah and as we fast let's reflect on the lessons of Ashura as they apply to your own lives your personal struggles your family struggles your community struggles and the struggles of the ummah at large we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who learn the, the message of Ashura and make us of those who repel injustice all over the world. O oh Allah, make us of those who follow your book and make us of those who follow the sunnah of your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Make us of those who try to repent from every sin. Make us of those who fast the day of Ashura and have all their sins forgiven. Make us of those who are reformers on the face of this earth. We ask you, Ya Allah, that you will fill our hearts with love for you and love for your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask you, Allah, to make us of those who fast the day of Ashura and accept our fast. Oh Allah, we ask you for all the good in this life and the hereafter and save us from the fire of hell. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhaban nar. 
Allahumma inna nas'alukal jannata wa ma qarraba ilaiha min qawlin wa amal wa na'uzu bika minan nari wa ma qarraba ilaiha min qawlin wa amal wa nas'alukal khair ma sa'alaka abduka Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam wa na'uzu bika minan syarri ma sta'adaka minhu abduka Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam Allahumma ya muqallibal qulub thabbit qulubana ala dinik Allahumma ya musarrifal qulub sarrif qulubana ala ta'atik Allahumma inna ala dhikrika wa syukrika wa husna ibadatik Allahumma inna nas'aluka hubbak wa hubba man yuhibbuk wa hubba amalin yukarribu ila hubbik Ya hayu ya qayyum wa bi rahmatika nastaghith Aslih lana sya'nana kullah wa la takilna ila anfusana tarfata ayn Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Wa aqimu as-salat